Today we're going to transform the data that you have saved in Firestore to a fully fledged customer relationship management system with Airtable. Firebase is great for building apps, but it doesn't really have any opinion about how you handle things on the business side. What if you need to visualize your data or send a text message to a user? Maybe you need to generate an invoice or assign one of your new users to a sales representative. Airtable is kind of like a build your own project management tool that's a cross between an Excel spreadsheet and a database. In this episode, I'll show you how to integrate it with Firebase store and cloud functions, and then talk about why you might want to use this tool. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and grab the source code from angularfirebase.com. I've been messing around with Airtable for the last couple weeks, and I've been super impressed with it, and they don't pay me to say that. I learned about it from my friends over at Let's Boot Switzerland, so a quick shout out to them. Let's start by talking about what Airtable is and why you might want to use it in the first place. It's basically an Excel spreadsheet that has a bunch of mini apps that you can apply to your data. We'll look specifically at some of these mini apps a little bit later, but you would most likely use this if you needed some project management tools on top of your Firestore data. So you wouldn't use this to show end users, but you would use it internally as a project management tool. Let's imagine you're building some kind of software as a service application with Firestore. You'll most likely want a CRM in place so you can follow up with leads and just make your employees more productive. You can get started by signing up for an Airtable account and it's free up to 1200 records. The first thing you want to do is go into your dashboard and add a new base. There's a whole bunch of starter templates, but we're just going to start out from scratch. I'm going to call this my customer base, and I'll give it a beer icon. You can think of a base as a context for your data, or in other words, an Excel spreadsheet. You can model your data by adding various columns to the spreadsheet. You'll need to define all the columns that you need before you import it from Firestore, because it can't just implicitly understand what your data is beforehand. You can see down here at the bottom, I have this add random customer button, which is just adding a record to Firestore with the JavaScript SDK for Firebase. Airtable also uses real-time listeners, so you should see the UI updated automatically as soon as your cloud function is finished. Let's get this started by running Firebase init functions. Then I'll be using TypeScript, but that part's optional because this cloud function is dead simple. The next step is to CD into the functions directory, and then we'll install the Airtable JS SDK. Just run npm install Airtable. Then we need to generate an Airtable API key, which we can do under the account tab. Then we can add it to the cloud functions environment by running Firebase functions config set Airtable.key equals your API key. Now we can go into index.ts and write the easiest cloud function of all time. First, we will import Airtable and then initialize it with the API key that we set in the environment. Then every base has its own unique ID, which we can reference by calling base with that ID, which you can find in the API docs in Airtable. In Firestore, I have a collection of customers and I want to update the Airtable database whenever a new customer is added. We can listen to the onCreate event on the customer's collection. Then we'll go ahead and set the data from this document as a variable and use that to update the base in Airtable. A base can have multiple sheets, so you'll want to reference the sheet, which in this case is customer data, and then just call create with the data that you want to add, and that's it. Now, every time a new customer is created in Firestore, you'll also have access to that data in Airtable. Run Firebase deploy only functions to put it to use in production. That's all the code we're going to write in this lesson. Now we can move on to the fun part, which is messing around with Airtable. I have some data here in Firestore that's represented in a JSON-like object, and if we go over to Airtable, you see it's more like a SQL database table or Excel spreadsheet. You can do pretty much anything you would expect in a spreadsheet, for example, highlighting some rows and getting the sum or average. You can sort and filter rows, but the really cool thing is you can change the view from a grid to something like a calendar. If you have a timestamp on your records, you can see everything in this calendar view. Or you can put everything in a gallery view, which is a little bit easier on the eyes. Or if you're a fan of Trello or Japanese manufacturing, you can put everything in a Kanban view. Let's imagine I hired a couple sales reps and I wanted to assign customers to each rep. I can simply drag and drop them in here and it will update that record in the table. These views are really nice for organizing your data, but I still haven't showed you the coolest part yet, which is Airtable blocks. A block is basically a mini app that you can apply to your data and it solves a lot of common use cases with project management and things like that. Let's go ahead and start by visualizing some of the data that we have in Firestore. In our table, we're keeping track of the user's country as well as their order total. 
My goal is to build out a chart that shows the order total across all customers based on their country of origin. All we have to do is come in here and set our country as the x-axis and then the order total as the y-axis. And that gives us a nice visual of the data that we can use for internal reporting. You can customize as many of these blocks as you want and apply them to any base in Airtable. That means you can completely customize your project workflow based on the needs of your company. In my case, I have a geo coordinate for every customer, so I might want to visualize them with Google Maps. One nice thing about Airtable is that it's tightly integrated with Google Cloud Platform, so you can simply enable some APIs and use them in Airtable. In this case, we want to enable the geocoding API and the Google Maps API. Then we can simply go into our Firebase project and add the API key from our web app config and copy and paste it into the Google Maps config in Airtable. Then I'm about to run into a problem because I've saved my latitude and longitude as just raw numbers in Firestore. But Google Maps is going to expect that in a format of a string with the lat and long concatenated together. So how might we solve this problem? I definitely don't want to go back and save more data in Firestore. So instead I can set up a new field here in Airtable, but we'll use the formula data type. Those who know Excel should be very familiar with spreadsheet formulas, but if not, the idea here is that we can combine multiple columns together based on some code. So in this case, we just want to concatenate two values together with a comma in the middle. When we click save, it automatically updates all fields in this row with the proper data format. If we open up the map block, we can see that now all of our customers are included on the map with their actual geolocation coordinates. We can even click on a map pin and update the customer record directly from the map. Now, another thing I get asked frequently is how do I generate a PDF from a cloud function? While you can do this programmatically in a cloud function, it might be easier to just do it visually with the page designer block in Airtable. This little app is a drag and drop page designer that has access to all of the data in Airtable. So you can automatically generate a standardized PDF for all of your customer records or whatever else you have saved in the table. That can be super handy if you need to send invoices periodically or if you just have a certain report that needs to go out to a specific customer. Once you have your template saved, you can scroll through and it will automatically generate a different report for each customer record. Another thing you might want to see is the timeline of user signups in your app. Maybe you initiated some kind of marketing campaign and you want to see the impact that had on user signups. With this block, I've set up a timeline based on the user's signup date. Visually, this is a lot more appealing than just looking at the data in a basic spreadsheet. So that's pretty cool, but what if I'm a sales rep and I want to be notified whenever a new customer signs up? There's a built-in chime event that can notify you whenever a new record is created in Airtable. We can set it up to play a sound and an animation whenever a new record is added, and then we'll bring up our Add Random Customer button here, and you can see that that plays every time we click the button. So I've just shown you about four or five of the different blocks that are available. There's 27 overall at the time of this video. If you're looking for an easy way to get project management integrated into your Firebase project, Airtable is definitely an intriguing option. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more advanced topics related to Firebase and cool APIs like this, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to a whole bunch of exclusive content, chat support, free copy of my book, and a whole bunch more. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.